Hello, welcome to Anselm Griffith's Occasional Series in MATLAB. Today we'll be doing counting some objects just using a slightly different method. So let's just start the program here. We've put in, as you can see in the left hand side, a number of breakpoints, so we want it there. Now we go to here. Okay. Uh, so we've cleared uh, the workspace, we've read in the image and we're just about to see the image there so there's the image and what we'd like to do is try and count the number of these white objects I uh, just to say as I've said in the notes I've said in the script this image is taken from Google Earth so it's not my image just to be clear about this and there are a number of pedestrians crossing the road and a number of cars so we could isolate them it make things easier and also if we could ignore the GPO here in the left that's the general post office and this building over on the right here is Cleary's and so we want to try and exclude the trees as well so we carry on so we have here FOI poly so as the name suggests we can work our way around now I suppose I could work my way around the right hand side down here at the pedestrians but just to simplify matters we leave it alone just go a little further now you could work your way more carefully around here but just not that pushed about it and then when you're finished just go out there a little bit, right button click here and create the mask so what we want to try and do here is uh, we're on uh, line 20 we want to try and exclude everything outside that mask area and we do that as by line 20 we carry on here for another sec so on line 20 we've done it, we've converted the image to grayscale. Uh, now we're calling up the Trash tool. Just coming up any second now. And this is a handy little uh, function found on the MATLAB file exchange site. I've given the credit in the script, I'll just go back to there a sec. We'll find it in a sec. Anyway, you can see here that as we drag the slider, you can see that it changes up here. On whatever threshold we're setting. So rather than guess it, we can leave it something like that not that worried so let's leave it like that that looks okay there are little flicks so we click done and we carry on and now what we want to do is we want to get the distance we want some sort of m uh, distance measurement so I just want to get rid of the display uh, turn off the labels so I know, as I've mentioned in the script, that it's white square followed by three blacks followed by a white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from there to there and I know that in total that's eight squares of uh, marble. Now if I didn't know this I couldn't really do the experiment. Right button click and I'm going to export the distance in pixels to the workspace and I know that, that this is approximately 8 pixels so point 0.1, point 0.2 and the distance between them yeah. so I've created that variable and then I know that the dimensions of one side is the distance divided by 8 roughly and it's a bit hit and miss but just to give us some idea so what I did then was, because it's a certain amount of perspective, I uh, converted the dimension of the side of it, uh, I multiplied it by 
2 just to allow for a certain fact of error and then the area of the square obviously if I have one side I just square it so that's what I did on line 43 I labeled it as before I got the region props and what I'm doing there on line 53 is I'm trying to find those white areas that have pixel values of greater than 5 and less than the maximum maximum square so in other words, I'm trying to filter out the noise and trying to remove the very large white objects uh, I found that subset using is member I think that's done on another uh, YouTube video that I've done before I relabeled the smaller subset that's the ones with the pixels between 5 and twice the maximum dimension and there they are and if I just go on one more line now there's a hole up here and there's a hole here and I think there's a hole here and why there's pedestrians and I didn't quite get these squares here and that's it done there and have I finished just give me one sec oh yeah uh, I think that's it and just give me one sec here and just look at the final image there the text is very small it's impossible to see but I have labeled each square there okay one or two things to comment upon uh, critically here this would not get you full marks you know, if you're doing it for your professor or teaching associate no matter what college you are why because this is not a robust experiment uh, in other words it does not take into account noise rotation or scale let's just before I finish a little look at the script so reading the image line 15 we ROI poly just to uh, select the area of interest line 20 we masked it out line 22 converted the grayscale line 25 we used our threshold tool uh, function that's available from the MathWorks website you can see it there uh, 6770 is the reference number uh, then I got that on lines 26 to 33 I got the distance from one white square to the second next white square uh, I just wanted to get some sort of reference and then on line 42 and line 43 I worked out uh, on line 42 what the size of the square was and then to allow uh, for a certain factor of error I doubled that and then I squared it so on line 43 I have the biggest possible square dimension line 46 I labelled it uh, line 48 I got the props and the only pr I know I have the three there but the only prop I really need is the area because I want to say find those values that have greater than 5 and less than the 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 maximum square area which is the what I think is the dimensions multiplied by 2 squared line 54 I do the subset that's those values that were that I found and then I labeled uh, those that subset in line 55 I got the region uh, props of that and I plotted it and I tried to put in the values of the centroid but the text is very small and the user might be able to read it but it's good to go. Okay so thanks very much, thanks for listening.